feel free to use the chat to say hello to everyone. Hello again, Diana. <laughs> wow, you're getting a lot of Jake today. I see Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Chris. Hi, Cheryl. Haven't seen you for a while, Chris. I hope you're doing well. Hi, Diane. Hi, Donna Marie. Me too. Me too. I'm excited too. So we had uh, quite a whack of women sign up for um, this VIP summit. So we're going to give it a couple of minutes uh, before we get going. Everyone got their workbook printed and ready? I hope. Got to get my timer ready. Got my time. Love your lipstick. Well, it's the only lipstick I ever wear, Chris. Red lips, red nails. That's me. That's what I'm all about. All right. Well, we're going to we're going to get started. Um I want to be respectful of everyone's time um and welcome you all to um the VIP summit for Yes, branding excellence. I'm all about branding. Um, for lead, I wanted to thank you all for taking the time to be here today. This is an exciting program. Um, it's a special program. And I know it's easy for me to say that because I designed and developed it, but it, but it really is. A um, few ground rules we want to talk about. Please do use the chat. If you want to share your conversation with the entire group, please just make sure that you click for everyone. We also have a Q&A box up at the top. If you have Q&A along the way, please um, just uh, type your question into Q&A and I will do my best to address it during the session. I am gonna be asking you some questions. When I ask you questions, please type it in the chat. If you have specific questions for me about something that um, we are discussing or um, uh, we've um, touched on along the way, please do use the Q&A box for your specific questions. General comments, answering the questions I ask you, please do use the chat. So let's get started. Um, you know you can lead. What lead is about is a clear message. We are gonna build one together in this program. Uh, a clear message is one of the most vital pieces of leadership that you can, um, you can have. Maximize your learning experience today. I know we have, we have uh, participants on the session today who have kids, dogs, cats, uh, husbands, wives, doesn't matter. Please do uh, shut your door if you have a door. If you don't, please try to let everyone know who is around you, that you are spending the next 90 minutes on you, that this is for you. Turn everything off in the background, uh, including your email system, Skype, iTunes, other programs you have going on. Also, please, if you can do it, silence your phone, turn off your phone. Uh, I know it's difficult to do um, because everyone is so attached to their phone and I totally get that. But for the next 90 minutes, please do yourself a favor and turn off your phone. Give yourself this time for the next 90 minutes uh, to discover how the LEAD program can help you. Uh, take your LEAD your way. LEAD is a unique program and you are going to hear that along the way. I'm sure there's many of you on the call, on the summit today, on the session today, who have taken leadership programs in the past. I have done more than I would like to count. 
uh, and you're going to see very clearly what is different about LEAD. Have your workbook printed, have it open in front of you, have it ready to go. We're going to be using the workbook along the way, along uh, during the session today. Uh, scribble in it, write in it. If you have ideas, something inspires you, please write in your workbook. I can tell you that it is designed to be a sustainable resource. And what do I mean by that? For those of the ladies on the session who were on GROW, you will hear me talk a lot about sustainability of learning. It is not a common topic out there in the world because a lot of people do not know what it means or what it is about. A, a valuable learning asset like your workbook will sustain your learning today from today forward because you will take the time to write things down and you will be given a system of how to use those things so that you can replicate it in all aspects of your life. You don't just lead if you're a business owner. You don't just lead if you're a boss. You lead all the time, every day, every moment of your life, whether you are opening a door for someone so they can walk through it. That is taking the lead and you are going to realize as we go through the session today what I'm talking about. Open your mind, get comfortable. I've got my water, so excuse me if I do uh, take a couple sips here and there uh, along the way. Open your mind, get comfortable, and get ready to learn. Tell me why are you here in the chat box? Tell me, why are you here? Make sure you have to everyone clicked. Why are you here, ladies? To move forward in personal and business life. To use more of my potential every day. Excellent. All right. Karina, Diane, Diana, Jenny, why are you here? I need to know if my message is clear enough. If I need to do this course or if I can do the Grow or Speak programs, okay. Uh, my biggest stress is not achieving and using my gifts to give back to the universe. Diane, great topic. I'm, thank you for typing that. We are going to talk about that today. How exciting. To find out more about this awesome program to step forward even more than I already am. Oh, Karina, you're the best. Cheryl, to step up and participate to learn new strategies. Excellent. I'm all about strategies. I'm all about systems. Cheryl, I'm all about sustainability of the learning, application of the learning. All right. Great answers, ladies. Um, Jenny, anything from you? Hi, Andrea. I see that you're on. Welcome for the, the um, participants that are just arriving. We're getting started. Tell me. Where do you want to take your lead in your life? I saw a couple of the participants be really clear about that, but where do you want to take the lead in your life? Hey, Andrea, welcome. Where do you want to take the lead in your life? Tell me, do you want to take it at the organic grocery store? Do you want to take it on the TTC where I live? Like, where do you want to take the lead in your life? Talk to me, ladies. Tell me what's happening. Lead myself first, developing systems to grow. Excellent. In conversation with everyone I come into contact with. Hmm. Hmm. My business and my community for women and youth in my community. Hmm. Lots of heart stuff there. I love it. Just because it's heart stuff doesn't mean it can't produce results. We're going to talk about that today. Excellent. All right. You are in the right place. 
I'm building a multi-million dollar company that allows people to grow into their incredible self and others. Excellent, Andrea. You're my kind, you're my kind of girl. You are in the right place. You know you can lead, but you struggle to communicate a clear message about who you are and what you do. Who you are and what you do. Who on, uh, who on the session would say they have a strong two minute drill? If I walked up to you at an event and I said, what do you do? Would I be able to in two minutes or less walk away and refer you to someone else? Would I understand what you do in two minutes or less? That is what a clear message is about. You're in the right place. You know you have something to offer. You know you, you want to communicate your value with conviction and professionalism. We're gonna talk about that today. Conviction versus professionalism. Conviction and professionalism. The balance of those two things. Women struggle with this. Conviction is a difficult skill to master. You're in the right place if you admire women who can communicate their technical competency in a language their clients, customers, peers, and bosses understand. Technical competency. Isn't that an interesting topic for a program called LEAD? And you're in the right place. You may want to use, you want to use your leadership to win the hearts and minds of your clients of your customers, your partners, your peers, to drive your financial results. You can use winning the hearts and minds of people to drive financial results. I have done it repeatedly in my life, and I have got a system how I did it. Here's the reality. There's three big reasons why women don't take the lead. Workbook, page three, three biggest reasons women don't take their lead. Number one, lack of confidence. Who on the session struggles with a lack of confidence? Number two, a struggle with clarity. I've heard numerous times over the last 20 years of my life from even strong women leaders, a lack of clarity. I have seen them sit at tables and boardrooms and struggle to be clear on their value and what they bring, not only to their clients or their customers, but to their peers, their community, their teams, themselves struggle with clarity. Next one, conviction is tough to master. There's a significant amount of information in uh, the LEAD program about conviction. It is a topic that we dig deep into, balancing conviction with professionalism. One of the things that women suffer as leaders are comments such as, she's too emotional, she's too aggressive, she's too assertive. I don't know if any of you have been called aggressive in your life or bossy or bold, or you've been told you step a little too far. Women struggle communicating their conviction not only because they're not great at it, but because the constructs that most of us operate in have been built by pe people other than women. And the reality of that is, if you own a business, there's a fairly good chance, unless you're in a business, uh, that services only women, you are facing this challenge. And we deal with this challenge in lead. So on page three, of your workbook, please ensure that you have written down those three reasons. And also at the bottom of your workbook, there's some, there's some space for you to provide yourself some insights about that for yourself. 
So what about you? What about you? Do any of those apply? Do they feel okay? Do they feel familiar? Uh, is it, are they things that keep you up at night, um, that you struggle with, that you want to know more about, uh, work with other women uh, who uh, have similar interests and, and uh, similar goals as you? Yes, absolutely. Clarity. Too many ideas. Too many ideas. Yes, Diana, we're going to talk about too many ideas. It is also something that many women I know and work with, uh, I've seen struggle, uh, even senior leaders that I've worked with. So do you have the courage to step first? And this is a big question. And I'm not quite sure if uh, all of you or some of you or a few of you uh, read my blog post on the importance of being first. I know there are a couple of ladies on the session today who weighed in on my blog post about that. And I thank you for that and your insights were excellent. Um, but stepping first is a big deal and it matters. It matters. So here's a question for you. I want you to think about this. Do you remember your first kiss? Do you remember your first kiss? Why is this an important question? Do you remember your first kiss and why is this an important question? Like a first kiss, people remember you, your service, your product, because the, there are five things at play. One of these things has got to be at play. You made them feel something. They see you as being a first for them. So uh, I, I, I know Jenny, who's on this session very well. And Jenny owns an ice cream shop. And Jenny's ice cream shop is an extremely unique experience for her customers and I've been in her shop when people have walked in and said I've never been in a place like this before they see her customers see her as being first they've probably been in a hundred ice cream shops in their life but they've never been in one like that they clearly see your benefit now ladies I know there's probably a few of you already thinking, I got this stuff cold. I guarantee you, you don't. I guarantee you that if you think people can clearly see your benefit, they can't. And you wanna know why I know they can't? Because you don't ask them. Women do not ask habitually about benefit statements. We love sharing information. Information is not necessarily a benefit. Because unless we understand who we're dealing with and who we're talking to, and we understand the benefits we can offer them based on where they are, not where we are, they will not clearly see your benefit. You create an emotional benefit for them. For them. Now, an emotional benefit is different than a benefit. And in LEAD, we learn about what that means. You, you find them at a time they need you. Your timing, this is so much about timing, business and, and development of your skill base and your learning and, and applying learning is so much about timing. So like a first kiss, one of these five things must be at play for people to remember you, your service, or your product. Question, is it easier to see the benefit of a brand product or service because of how it makes you feel. What do you think in the chat, ladies? What do you think of that question? Is it true? Is it easier to see the benefit of a brand, product or service because of how it makes you feel? Yes. Andrea, yes, yes. Resounding yeses, resounding yeses. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think about a brand or a product or a service that you see 
an extreme amount of value in. You got it? Can you feel it? Can you feel how it makes you feel when you interact with that brand or that service or that product? Open your eyes. Do you see greater value in that brand, in that service or that product you thought of because of how it makes you feel? What is it about that brand or service or product and how it makes you feel? Make a note in your workbook. What is it? What is that magic thing? about that brand or service or product. What is it? Pinpoint it. Write it down because we're going to come back to that theory a little or that strategy a little bit later about how individuals, business owners, brands, companies do that. What is that magic piece? Developing the ability to emotionally link your brand, product or service to value is a fundamental building block in lead. Now, I'm sure this seems like an extremely different approach to a program called lead. There's a reason for that. There's a big reason for that. And there's also a big reason for why developing the ability to emotionally link to people is vital to driving financial success. Why? It's a good question. Because the absence of emotional value, in the absence of emotional value, people stop listening. So remember when I asked if you had a, a, a strong two minute drill? The reason most people don't have a strong two minute drill because their two-minute drill is about them. It's about them telling someone what they do. It isn't about a moment before you answer the question. You look at who asked you the question. What are they wearing? Do they have a wedding ring on? Do they look tired? Where are they from? When someone asks you what you do, your knee-jerk reaction is to answer instead of observing and looking and discovering something about the person who asked you that question. And in the absence of that emotional value, they stop listening. You haven't taken a lead. Because in the absence of emotional value, you aren't taking the lead. You aren't taking that pause, taking that space, because you're too focused on you, and you're too focused on your answer instead of the person who asked you the question. So a little bit about me, and there's a, a few ladies on the, uh, on the uh, participants on the session who were on the last one. And, and my story for lead is very different than my story for um, grow. Um, last summer, and, I, and for those of you who have creeped on me in my LinkedIn and, and read my story, I worked on Bay Street for a very long time. In fact, in one roundabout way or another, I worked on Bay Street for almost 20 years. I have a closet full of pinstripe suits. I sat in boardrooms. I was a vice president in a bank. and. Um, what came to, to happen for me was that I realized it wasn't my path and that I didn't fit and that I needed to find a way to take a lead. Even when I didn't know what that looked like and even when I had no idea what that lead was going to be, I knew I needed to do it. And the first thing that I did when I knew that I needed to make a change was I went and listened. And for those of you who have read my blog, you ha you've uh, hopefully uh, you've been on there. If you haven't, I highly, uh, I highly recommend you check it out. I wrote a blog post about my experience and what I did 
um, after um, my path changed for me. And the first thing I did was I went and I spoke to women and men uh, who I admire greatly in my life, and I asked them questions about how I was going to transition, how I was going to not continue to walk a path that I had been walking for over 20 years and I had all my plans and I knew what was going on. How was I gonna take a lead? How was I gonna take a lead when I wasn't a vice president anymore? What does that look like? I did not know. So instead of focusing on me, I went and focused on all of the experience and the people around me. And uh, I got the same word over and over and over and over. And it was right, right, focus, right, 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 focus, right. And I did. And I learned a lot in that process. And what I realized in that process was there was a significant amount of information that I had, uh, I had, I had been exposed to about leadership. And there was a, a red thread and a common thread in the leadership experiences I had myself as an individual, but the leadership learning and training and, and programs that I had been exposed to, there was something about them that that didn't that wasn't fitting together when I got outside. And lead is is the outcome. Of, uh, of my journey with all of the leadership experience and exposure I've had in my career, along with 74 other people that I went and did interviews and discussions with um, in regards to their own experiences as well. So why my story? Why my story matters to where you're at? Even if you don't think it does, uh, you'll probably realize at some point that it, that it, that it will. And that's the, that's the beauty of having experiences like this and making connections with people like this because somewhere down the road, their story matters and mine will. Most, if not all, leadership programs are about theory. Would everyone agree that most leadership programs are about theory? Theory of this, theory of that, theory of the other thing. Most leadership programs are about theory. Very few are not. And I can tell you that lead is not. Lead is not about theory. After lead, you will link your unique leadership message to value for your clients, your customers, your peers, other leaders, and the link that you make between those two things will drive your financial and your personal results. So when I say most leadership programs are about theory, this is what I'm talking about. Most leadership programs talk about you and, 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 and ideas, and, and they, they don't get to the root of value and communicating value and making that emotional value to the outside world of you to tr drive financial results. Most leadership programs are not attached to financial results. I'm a banker. I don't do anything without attaching financial results. And one of the reasons I don't is because I see many, many women who own businesses stay small and not grow into what they potentially could be because they cannot make that inherent connection between the value that they bring to their clients, their customers, their peers, and other leaders. They get lost in those ideas and that translation and that clarity and that communication and their confidence, their conviction and their competency. Competent, technical competency is one of the most important skills you have. And I, I see very few women communicate their technical competency in a way not only that drives emotional value and benefit, but also benefit of what they can do for their clients, their customers, their peers, and other leaders. So three ways to get massive value from your lead workbook today. Be honest. If you've been on other summits, uh, my other summits, you are always going to see this in my learning experience. Be honest with yourself. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it hurts. 
sometimes it's hard, but I challenge you to be honest with yourself. Trust your answers. Trust your answers that you're going to give yourself today. Your answers may be different tomorrow. They may be different the day after that. But write your answers down and trust them because this is a process. You're going to go through a process. Most important thing I want you to do when you get off this session is some of the strategies that you are going to learn on this session, I want you to put them in action. They are a tangible framework. They are a tangible system to help you put these strategies into action. So building clarity and lead, what does that look like? What does that look like for you? So on page four of your workbook, you are going to work through a few things. Building clarity and lead is a four-step system. You are going to understand first what you're self-conscious about. You are going to second your why. Women love to talk about their why. What women are not great at is talking about their how. So in lead, closer to the end of lead, we start talking about technical competency. But what the work you do in clarity, which is in the first part of lead, is vital to get in place before you can talk about technical competency, before you can talk about conviction, or before you can attach all of that and wrap it up in your courage. You're going to take ownership. You are going to take ownership of your current lack of clarity, your current muddiness, your current halfway to clarity, or maybe you're an individual who's got a huge amount of clarity and this system will just take it up another notch. But in LEAD, you are gonna work through a four-step clarity system. And most important, and it's vital to understand this, you've got to be realistic about this. Meet yourself where you are today. You may be somewhere different tomorrow or the next day, but meet yourself today exactly where you are. So self-conscious, we're going to start there. Page four of your workbook. <laughs> Excuse me. Step one, this is a timed exercise. I'm going to give you ladies three minutes to do this. Understand what you're self-conscious about. Do not stop. Do not cross out your answers. Do not edit. When you keep writing, something will emerge and surprise you. So your self-conscious breakthrough sentence. What I tell myself about being a leader is blank, but the truth is blank. I am starting the timer now. What I tell myself about being a leader is blank, but the truth is blank. Timer is on. about a minute left if you're brave and you want to share in the chat what your answer was go for it
All right. Now, this is an important question. Um, I want you to look at and remember what you wrote. At the bottom of your workbook, it talks about how giving yourself permission to push through that self-consciousness is a gift. We're all self-conscious. Let's, it's, it's, it's reality, but it's really being able to identify what's holding you back is where the power comes. So this sentence is vital to building clarity, because if you cannot figure out what's holding you back and you're not facing that and you're not looking at that, then going on towards building more clarity about something isn't going to happen. So what's next? Why do you want to lead? It's time to look at you. On page five of your workbook, time to get honest with yourself. It's time to, st it's time to uh, start looking uh, at what you already know and look from your heart. Bottom line is you're going to start this. I want you to write one paragraph about why you want to lead. One paragraph about why you want to lead. After the webinar, I want you to give yourself permission to read the statement to someone you trust. This exercise matters. It really matters. So I'm going to set the timer again. I want you to write one paragraph about why you want to lead. Good, Andrea. I like that. There's a jackpot when you declare to be a self-confident, strong woman. That can be a jackpot because it depends on your audience. That statement wouldn't resonate with all audiences. Among friends, it's perfect, though. Why you want to lead. Yes. More will be revealed, Donna Marie. Okay, you got about 30 more seconds, ladies. Mm -hmm. That's an important part about it, Diana. Excellent. So please make sure you keep that page. It's going to be important when you look back. So permission. This is something that... Um, Almost everyone I know struggles with, and, and I'm, 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 I'm interested to explore more about why that is. So we're going to have some fun here. On page six, do you remember when you were in high school and uh, you used to uh, bring handwritten notes to excuse yourself from class? Sometimes you forged them and they were from you, or sometimes they were legit and they were from your parents. Uh, because you needed to do something else important and depending on what stage in your life it was would be depending on how important it actually was um, That's what you're going to get to do right now This time is about who you want to be as a leader So my example is in your workbook Dear Jake, 
Jake is excused from doing dishes, folding laundry, and thinking, guilting, and shooting yourself about work today for a minimum of four hours because she needs time to build clarity about who she is, what she wants to do, and more importantly, what sets her apart from others. My competitive advantage. Jake needs to get in touch with what makes her special. Jake is on a mission to bring her brand to the world. I give her full permission to do this today and every Saturday until she's clear. Then I give her permission to celebrate like the rock star she is. I want you to take the time after the session today and do this for yourself. Write yourself a permission statement. Take time to do it because we are continuing to lay the foundation of your leadership brand and clarity of it. Clarity is about being able to give yourself the permission for the space to figure it out. And a part of figuring it out is working through it in a system. It, it is about having a construct around it. Not everything in life can be based on theory or based on on ideas a construct and a system has to come in at some point to produce results and linking that emotional benefit for your customers and your clients and your peers and other leaders clarity is a big key a big key success factor in being able to link that emotional benefit so we've talked about permission what's next be realistic do not overpromise and underdeliver. I know that is a catchphrase, and I normally do not use catchphrases, but it is an important one. And so is page seven, because page seven gives you space to think about what this looks like. So there are four must do's to take the lead. First one you are going to learn about in the LEAD program. Those four must-dos are very specific things. Now, you want to start with what you think your must-dos are. Because when you look at what you think your must-dos are versus what a tangible and practical must-do is, often those two things do not connect. And that is where a system comes in, because a system can help connect those of you that are more creative and ide ide idealists and dreamers and people who are ideators and you sit at a table with a bunch of people and you have 50 ideas in your head and you're go, 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 go. When you're that type of individual, it's very hard to land in a practical system which is why one of my favorite things to do as a learning professional is build systems for people who have great ideas. Not only do I like to build systems for people who have great ideas, the majority of these systems I have applied myself. And in the end, it is about driving results, some personal results, some professional results, some financial results, results systems drive results so on the bottom of page seven there are a couple of sentences that i want you to fill in a leader believes in the vision enough to see it through to the end how many of you on the session tonight have had great ideas and you went to implement it and you did one or two pieces of it and you abandoned the idea. Or you never took a step to lead. You didn't take that first step. You didn't take that first step. Why is that? You're going to understand the reason for that in the lead program. Why do women leaders matter? This is a topic I am extremely passionate about. They hear us, make us feel, and they inspire us. Now, there are great male leaders that do a couple of those. 
and I've worked with them and I've met them and they've mentored me. I have rarely seen a man, a male leader, be able to pull off all three. And I can think maybe of two I have seen do it. What are the blanks on number four, page seven? We're not there yet, Donna Marie. So as it relates to why women leaders matter, they hear us, make us feel, and they inspire us. Now, up on the top of the page, there are four must do. You want to fill in one, two, and three for yourself. We will come back to those. Number four, if I'm not leading, then I'm listening in an inactive way. So remember earlier when I said, when someone asks you what you do, if you are busy thinking about what your answer is and how you're going to deliver it, you're not leading. And when you're not leading, you're listening in an inactive way. A great leader is clear and she doesn't need to explain. A great leader is clear and she doesn't need to explain. Yes, that is not happening. I will persist. I have faith and I'm goal oriented. I agree. Excellent, Andrea. All right. So let's dig into the lead program and what this program looks like. First, we are going to build a clear brand message with our brand builder. I have, along with a few other really smart people I know who have extremely solid personal brands. Um, uh, designed a, uh, um, a unique brand builder tool for this program. It is, you will only get it in this program. We will link your clear message on who you are, what you do, and most importantly, what sets you apart from your competition. Big world out there, ladies. Lots of women out there saying, I'm strong, I help people realize their full potential. I'm an authenticity coach. I'm a this coach. I help people come to realizations about this and that. Millions of people out there are doing the same thing. What sets you apart? Why would I do business with you? If you do not have a clear brand message and you do not have clarity, people aren't going to do business with you. You're going to be growing your business to a certain amount and you're going to stop. And it's going to be really hard work because you're going to have to continue to rely on your network and your friends and people who know you to grow your business. If you cannot grow your business in a market of at least 250 people who do not even have a clue you are alive in the next year, you will not scale your business. Do you want to know why I know this? I am a banker. I have banked multi-million dollar businesses. I have banked businesses that are startups. I have banked everything from a startup to a multi-million dollar business and everything in between. Businesses who rely on who they know now and their ideas right now without a brand that is clear and is connected and can link that emotional benefit will not grow. So write that down. If you are not in the position to go and do business with 250 people that have no idea you're alive in the next year, your business will not grow. That is what the brand builder system will help you do. You're going to learn to communicate your message with a perfect balance of conviction and professionalism. Now, as I said to Andrea, Andrea typed in the chat, she's a strong woman. She's unstoppable. In an audience like this, that message resonates. In an audience of people that you may not know or who are not familiar with you, that message may not resonate. So you need to understand situationally. Now, forgive me, I am going to talk about NFL football. My sister is on this session today, so I'm sure she is rolling her eyes. But I am going to talk about football for a very important reason. 
I don't know how many of you watched the Super Bowl, but I'm sure you heard about it because, you know, if you're alive and you have a Facebook feed, you heard about it. Here's the deal. The New England Patriots were down 28 to 3 at halftime. We had an Atlanta Falcons fan over at our house. My husband is a newer, I'm a New Orleans Saints fan, so, you know, I, I, am, I am by default a Patriots fan because my husband is a massive Patriots fan, has been for decades, even when they were no one. I was sitting downstairs with this Atlanta Falcons fan, and he thought it was tied up. I went upstairs when one of my other girlfriends arrived, and she said, what's the score? And I told her, and she said, the game's over. I said, no, it isn't. Not even close. Not even close to be being over. And there's a reason I said that. The New England Patriots know their job. They have more conviction in what their job is and more clarity in situational football than any other team in the world. There's only one other, there's only, I can only think of three other athletes that have the same. And I would say the, uh, the All Blacks in rugby and Roger Federer in tennis. It's called situational football, situational tennis, situational rugby. So what I am talking about with conviction is your conviction must be situational. If you are not paying attention to who your audience is, you can make a big error and you can have your message go sideways. So even when you think you're clear, if you are not concentrating on situational conviction, I guarantee you there's a greater percentage chance of you making a mistake than you hitting the jackpot. And in lead, we're gonna talk about that balance of conviction and professionalism. The professionalism comes in in knowing your audience and being able to implement that situational conviction. The next part you're going to go through is mastering technical competency, language and communicate it in a way others will understand. Technical competence is vital to success, to be and to be recognized as a front runner in your field. Okay, who on the, uh, which participant or any participant on the session, give me your definition of technical competency. Nope, that's not technical competency. Anybody? Technical competency is how. How you do what you do. Technical competency is a difficult skill to master because when we get lost in the how of what we do, we start speaking a language that's only familiar to us. So for example, I'm gonna call my little sister out again who's on the call, owns an ice cream shop. If my sister tried to explain to me why an ice cream machine needed to be a certain exact temperature to get the right consistency of her ice cream, I would stop listening because she isn't speaking to me in a language I understand. Now, if she said to me something like this, Jake, how do you like your ice cream? Well, I don't eat dairy, so I'm pretending. I like my ice cream cold, and I don't really like it mushy or really soft. Even if it's soft serve, I like it to have a little bit of, a little bit of resistance. And she listened to me, and she would be able to say to me in my shop how we deliver our product is X, Y, and Z because she asked me a question first to discover how her how attaches to my why. And when you can attach your how to someone's why, that is where emotional benefit is born. And in lead, we're gonna talk about the importance of technical competency. It is a topic that I believe is not talked about enough. 
In fact, I rarely hear it talked about unless I'm talking to people in my circle because technical competency is a conversation that we often have. So in LEAD, we're going to talk about technical competency. We are going to link the emotional value to your clarity, to your conviction and your competency. We're gonna drive your financial and personal results. We're gonna win the hearts and minds of your clients, customers, peers, and partners. The important part of what we learn in week four of the LEAD program is really about linking all of this together. And it takes courage to link all of this together. And it takes a significant amount of work to link all of this together. Because if you miss the boat on clarity, then the rest of the system falls apart. And that is why in the LEAD program, that four-step system to clarity is going to be really important for you to know and understand before you move on to the subsequent parts of the LEAD program. Now remember, and I said this earlier today, nothing I've shared with you about LEAD today is theory. I've successfully implemented every single one of the strategies that, I, that I'm going to talk to you about in my career in business, and they have um, produced excellent results, tangible results social proof results. Uh, Karina's on the call, Karina's on the session. One of the first times Karina and I had a discussion, uh, she said to me, wow, your background is really interesting. You've done so much. And the reality is I have. And the gifts I have to give to the world are about systems and tangible results. And that is why I love learning. And that is why I love building learning programs, which help move women toward their financial, and their, <laughs> thank you, Karina, for validating my story, and their financial and personal results. So I am not special. And any session that you are on with me, no matter how many programs you do, or if we work in coaching together, or we do corporate learning stuff, and Karina knows this, I say it all the time, I am not special. I have simply developed a leadership system. My system has drove my success. And I want to share it with you. If I can do it, you can do it too. I saw people type, I want to build a multi-million dollar company. And I want to do this and I want to do that. You need a system. You need a system in order to do those sorts of things. So what will LEAD do for you? Because at the end of the day, this is about you. This is about you making a decision to do something for you that's going to move you forward and build new skills and produce results. So in LEAD, here is what you will create. You will create a clear leadership brand. You will create a balance of conviction and professionalism where your how marries your customer, your client, your peer, your boss, other leaders, why? Confidence through technical competence. We're gonna talk a lot about that. Like I said, if you do not speak your technical competence in a language where other people can understand it, so if your positioning statement or your brand statement is really ethereal, and, and you're talking to people who don't understand what mind mapping or pathing or you know coaching people to authenticity means, then your business is gonna stay this small because you only have one message. A brand message is broad. It's broad, but at the same time it's clear. And it's a it's a very finite skill. It is a it is an extremely technical thing to develop when you start digging into that work and you will create financial and personal results through your courage. That is where the rubber hits the road, when your personal financial results match your courage because you've got a system built around you that increases your confidence and helps you step forward and move forward. All right, so we're gonna talk about your workbook again. So we went over the four weeks of the LEAD program. So on page eight, we have week one, which is clarity. The first statement on page eight is every brand has a positioning statement. 
and we are going to work on a positioning statement in LEAD. For those of you that were on the growth session, it's not as robust, but it, it, in, the same, in the same vein. After the session tonight, I want you to finish page eight. My brand is about blank because blank, it's important to learn, and my life will change because I now understand my blank. The next part of page eight, some things I got for free, my gifts from the universe. So this is a total ripoff from my friend Tina Overberry, who is the program director of Publish. She has this great thing where she connects with people about what they got for free. So here's, for example, what I got for free. Uh, when I was born, and if you ever get to speak to my mother, and again, my sister's on this call, she loves telling the story about the day I showed up on the planet. And uh, a long time ago, there was a comedy record by a dude that I'm not gonna mention because he's a gross freak, but it was a funny thing. And my mother loved to tell this story. She would say, Jake came out of the chute and she looked around and she said, who's in charge? You just lost your job. My mother thinks that's really funny. I was naturally gifted with a magnetism that makes me a natural leader in any situation. That's one of the things that I got for free. Another thing I got for free, I got great lips. I got great lips for free. Another thing I got for free, I got a great voice. I have a phenomenal voice. I got that voice for free. One other thing I got for free was a head and a heart that match. A head and a heart that match. And I have come to understand how rare that actually is. So tonight, I want you to think about what you got for free, because it's important to understand how what you got for free drives your brand. You want to understand you. So I'll tell you a little anecdotal story to help you, help you figure out this section. So my mother was here in Toronto with me just before Christmas, and we were in the Bay. And uh, I was obsessed about this pink tartan dress that I wanted, and it was ridiculously expensive, and I don't need it. And anyway, so we walked on, we came up the escalator, and uh, we walked on to one of the floors of the bay. And the bay in Toronto was huge, like huge, twice the size of Vancouver, way bigger than Nordstrom's in Vancouver. It's massive. It's three city blocks in Toronto, if you're not familiar with it. And my mother and I came to the top of the elevator. And this woman comes over to me and she's like, urgent, 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 urgent. And she was up and she's like, excuse me, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? And I kind of thought, okay, sort of weird. And this is what the woman said to me. She said, I am a visual designer here in the Bay. I manage all of the, uh, all of the windows and all of the, um, all the displays and how everything is put together. And she said, every single time you are in this store, I see you. Every time, it doesn't matter if I'm on the other end of the floor or I just catch you out of the corner of my eye, I see you. And I looked at her and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand what that means. And she said, your visual brand is one of the most clear and consistent and concise visual brands I've ever seen. I know you like loafers with tassels. You always have red lipstick on. You always have red nail polish on. Your hair is always a certain way. Your voice and the things you say are almost exactly the same every time I see you. And I was astounded. And she said, that is an important thing to have. So when I'm talking about brand and what your freebies are, figure out how your freebies that are uniquely yours will fuel that clarity in your brand. That is the middle of page eight. At the bottom of page eight, get your pen ready. I need a clear brand message on who I am, what I do, and what sets me apart 
in lead, I am going to dig at that. What sets you apart? Because without the ability to compete, doesn't matter what you do, whether you groom cats or you make ice cream or you deliver learning or you walk dogs. Without the ability to compete, your business will not grow. And competing is about a clear brand message. Next line, I need clarity to communicate my message to customers, clients, peers, and leaders. Now in lead, for those of you who have watched the video for lead, I talk about the two minute drill. And I say to you in that video, I want to be able to recommend you after the lead program. That is what you are looking to create. A brand that people instantly, instantly walk away from you and say, you need to go talk to her. I just found out that she does exactly what you and I were talking about last Thursday. This is how she does it. She's different and you need to go do business with her. Outcome of lead, outcome of lead. Page nine, conviction. In week two, I will communicate my message with a balance of conviction and professionalism. In week two, I will learn to communicate my message with a balance of conviction and professionalism. This is another exercise for you after the session. I want you to go through this exercise and I want you to describe a woman you know who exudes a genuine belief in herself. What is her energy like? What makes her memorable? Take note of how she makes you feel when you're around her. Now, pretend you're speaking with her. What questions would you ask her about her brand? Because I guarantee you, a woman like that is very clear on her brand. And she can communicate her technical competency in a way that it marries why. I want you to explore with yourself tonight, what questions would you ask her? Do you know her story? And if you don't, ask her out for coffee. If she's not near you, ask her for a Skype chat, a Zoom call, whatever you need to ask her for, connect with her and have this conversation. Uh, her, your story, your story is a really important building block in taking your lead. Competence, we've talked a lot about it tonight. Technical competence is vital to success. Write this down, ladies. Technical competence is vital to success. And here's why. It gives others confidence in my front runner ability. People want to do business with front runners. People want to do business. Remember in the beginning of the session where I said you make them feel like you're there first? even though they've been in 25 ice cream shops, when my little sister's customers walk in her business, they all feel like it's the first time they've been in an ice cream shop. She spent hours figuring out what the magic of that was, down to the colors and the sounds and the door and the menu. That is technical competency. It's vital. Again, after the summit on your own time, Write down what you do. Write down how you do it. I want you to read and write. I want you to write about how your technical competency, how it's yours and only yours. No one else does it exactly how you do. You're an individual person. You're a unique butterfly. Now look at your statement again and ask yourself, is it written in a language someone else would understand? So I'm challenging you in this section, ladies. When you write down what you do and how you do it, if you go back and you're using words that don't translate, 
your technical competency in a language that someone else is going to understand, you need work. We can do that work in LEAD. At the bottom of the page, in week three of LEAD, we develop a communication strategy around your technical competence. I have to say, this is my favorite. <laughs> Even though the, the first part of, of LEAD is heavy, heavy on that brand builder, this is really where, where I think the rubber hits the road. People must understand, at the bottom of the page, you're filling in your blanks. People must understand me to get behind me and refer me to others. And I'm going to give you a litmus test. When someone refers you business, how long do you think it takes them to explain to someone else what you do? If that is more than two minutes, it needs work. If you and I had a discussion and I didn't walk away from you, and I wasn't able in two minutes or less to first of all understand what you do and how you do it, but turn around and refer you to someone else in less than two minutes, needs work. Bottom of the page, communicating my technical competency to others in a language they understand will help me become a recognized front runner in my field. Communicating my technical competency to others in a language they understand will help me become a recognized front runner in my field. And finally, ladies, we've arrived at courage. I cannot demonstrate courage without being clear about who I am and what I do. At the top of page 11. On page 11, there's a few other things to do on your own time. Why do I think courage is an important part of leadership? And three attributes of a courageous woman leader. On the bottom of page 11, there are a few other blanks. And I encourage you, as we go to the page for lead on the lab, to figure out what those are. So in the lead program, what will you get? you get our complete brand builder framework, as I said. Weekly video content guiding you through the steps. One of the great things about the LEAD program is it's, de it's developed and delivered in a blended learning system. You can learn at your own pace. Online, I give you swipe files, videos, and someone's gonna ask me what a swipe file is. A swipe file is a handy dandy little checklist for all of the buckets that we go through um, uh, uh, in the lead program. So there's swipe files for brand, there's, there's swipe files for clarity, there's swipe files for competency, there's swipe files for conviction, there's swipe files for courage. You get a lot of nifty tools, not only to help you work through the program, but what do I talk about at the beginning of the session? Sustainment of your learning. There is no point there is no point in investing in a learning experience for yourself if you are not going to have one that is going to provide sustainable results. And the more you get to know me, the more you will understand that you will never have a learning experience with me that will not produce results on a sustainable long-term way. And if you want to see proof of that, go read my LinkedIn. You're going to, um, there's about eight videos, special videos. These are outside of the weekly videos you're gonna get to watch again and again and again as you go. And um, I designed them around um, the system. I designed these eight uh, short hit videos for when you're going to pitch. When you're going to pitch a big new client or you have to go to the bank to ask for money or you're gonna be talking to an investor. I have got great, I've got eight great situational lead, situational leadership videos in this program uh, on eight of the most common obstacles I see women struggle with in taking the lead. 
You also get to be a member of a private members only group with myself. I have five amazing, amazing guest speakers that come in and do Facebook Live Q&A sessions in the LEAD program. Um, some of my closest peers who are incredibly powerful leaders, who have incredibly clear personal brands, their technical competency is dialed right in, uh, and their business skyrocketed when they did that work. And the women that um, become learners in the LEAD program will get to meet each one of them, which is a really exciting piece of it. So what are the three most important concepts you learned today? I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. I want you to really think about this. What are the three most important concepts you learned today? And as you can see in the workbook, there's space for some final insights and some thoughts about your experience today on the session. So please make sure you take the time to write about some of your final insights. As well. So what's next? Let's talk about what's next. What does this all look like on the ground? As I said, I'm not a big fan of theory, and I think you gathered that uh, by um, the conversation, uh, the learning that you went through um, this evening on the session. So what does it look like on the ground? I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the ground. We're gonna go and take a look at lead on the learning lab. So just give me a second here while I get us there. Okay, so this is the lead page on the Learning Lab. For those of you who have yet to visit the Learning Lab, you will get the link to this page in the chat. And I encourage you to go and take a look at the page uh, and take a look at the lab in general. Um, it's an important place for you to visit and for you to get to know. Uh, because it is a place where uh, we are creating results for women. So this is the lead page. So it's all of the things we talked about today. Clarity, conviction, competence, and courage. How the program works, I walked you through the four weeks of the program. Each week, what happens? The nice thing about lead is that although it's built in a four-week um, four system, it's learn as you go, at your own pace, finish as you want to, finish as you need to. I've had a couple of women that four weeks did it each week, each week, once a week, um, they were able to do that. Um, but the, the nice thing about how I've designed the program is it will serve the purpose that you needed to serve along the way. Week three is competence. Week four is courage. After lead, we've talked about who you will be. You'll have a clear message about your unique brand of leadership, message to drive financial and personal results, confidently position your product and service in the noisy market, turn your leads and clients into customers quicker. We're gonna talk a lot about that in the competency part of lead. Uh, build your competence and breed confidence in your skills and abilities, and most importantly, be bold, courageous, and how to win in the market. I'm a big fan of winning. And for those of you uh, from the VIP group, 
um, you know that uh, I built a great tool called the Daily Win Planner. If you haven't downloaded it yet, go get it. What I give in the program, uh, customized learning path, brand builder, success checklist, resource guides, and you get a lead journal as well. Journal is a very important part of this program, being able to reflect on your experience uh, and feel your way through uh, what you've learned uh, and um, being able to apply what you've learned along the way. So that is what the um, lab looks like. So what's your investment? Um, nothing, uh, nothing that's good in life is free. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard that statement before. Um, so the investment in the LEAD program is $197. So the LEAD program is a one-time payment of $197. And you can register for the program today on the page. I put the link in the chat. Now, you will see that there is a March intake for LEAD. The intake will be probably closer to the end of March. So if you register for the program today, you will not pay for your program until the program launches at the end of March. I will encourage you to register because there are limited enrollments in the program. In regards to the learning experience, I am a big fan of an intimate learning experience. And for those of you that have been on the sessions all week this week on all the different summits, you uh, probably have a clear idea of what my learning style is like. And the fact that I enjoy uh, intimate learning experiences even when I'm facilitating 200 people. So enrollment will be, um, uh, you can register immediately and you will not pay your 197 for the program until the program launches and does its intake at the end of March. But there will be limited enrollment uh, in the program itself. Now, anyone have any questions in the chat? Any questions, any comments? I don't see any Q&A. Dates after March. Diana, Mar um, LEAD is um, an evergreen enrollment. So after March, you can enroll in it whenever you choose to. That's the plus of a, of a pace as you go program. You can enroll in it whenever you need to. Good, I'm glad. You're welcome, Andrea. It was my pleasure. So here's what I hear a lot of. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't have time. I don't know if I'm ready. Can I do this? We've gone through some q and A. I see a question here. Can I take this while I take the speak course? Sure, absolutely, Donna Marie. Absolutely, you can. Um, speak uh, will probably start at about the same time as lead. But the nice thing about lead, Donna Marie, is that you can do it at your own pace. So if you take 10 weeks to do the four weeks, that is just fine. Thank you, Cheryl, I appreciate that. I hope I see you registered in it. Does that, does that make sense to you, Donna Marie? Yes? Excellent. Any other questions? So I wanted to give you an idea about my social proof for this program because I am a big fan of providing social proof. Um, I love this picture because I think it speaks to uh, women loudly and clearly because she is still in there waiting. And this is uh, a comment from a, a woman that I've worked with extensively in leadership. Uh, over the years, uh, she happens to be uh, one of the leaders in one of the largest healthcare outfits in Canada. And um, I've done a lot of transformational work with her. Uh, Diana, I am the main instructor for LEAD, but as I said, there will be experts dropping in to the private members group during the program. The, the week to week content and the video content is done by me.
I asked just because there seems to be 10 women. Yes, there are 10 women. And those 10 women have their own programs. And they will be launching throughout the next few months as we onboard uh, everyone onto the platform. Sorry, Andrea, I'm not clear on what you're saying here. Excellent. So ladies, as I said, um, please feel free to get your registration in. Uh, the intake, the link is in the chat box. And the intake will be in lead for lead at the end of March, but please do get registered once you're on the list you will be put into the first intake in the program. And as I said, one of the great things about the program is at your own pace and you can um, work with the content and work with the other women that'll be in the members group along the way. Are there any other questions? You all have the link, so please do go onto the link in the lab and get yourself registered. Oh, thank you, Diane, I appreciate that. Thank you for that feedback. Wanna make sure there's no final questions in the chat. Oh, thank you, Donna Marie, I appreciate it. This would be a nice little supplement to, um, to speak for you. This will keep you on your leadership beam while you're developing your, your keynote. Okay, ladies, thank you very much for your time this evening. I really appreciate you being here and spending this time and investing this 90 minutes in yourself. You did some great work. Please utilize your workbook. It will help sustain some of the concepts and some of the systems that we talked about. Um, you're welcome, Jenny, um, that we talked about tonight. Please do not put the workbook under your, under your desk or on the floor. Please do take the time to do your reflections and the work, as well as I invite you to get registered for this program. As I said, it's learn at your own pace. So even if you're jammed up right now, you can squeeze this in in between things and really take your lead. You can accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. We'll work you through your brand clarity. We will take you through your conviction. We will take you through your competency and connect your how with that why and create that emotional benefit for your customers and your clients and your peers and other leaders and position you as a front runner in whatever you do. So I wanna thank you for your time. I appreciate your attention. You were a wonderful group of women to work with and participants. I, I look forward to meeting you in the program and working with you in the program. And I appreciate uh, all the best for every single initiative that's in the pipeline. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and I appreciate, I appreciate your time. Your brain is spinning. Good, Diana. Keep your workbook out. Get that pen. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. And most importantly, ladies, put it into action and register. Register. Invest in yourself. Invest $197 in the LEAD program and invest in yourself. I really look forward to working with you. Thank you for your time, ladies. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.